Talking Music with Big Andy. On this week's podcast, Loz Campbell is talking music with me, Big Andy. Hello, welcome to the podcast. I'm Big Andy and I have with me today uh, Loz Campbell. Hi. Hi everyone. Uh, so, um, you're based in Yorkshire, yeah? Whereabouts in Yorkshire are you? Um, West Yorkshire, so, so that's just the coffee machine going on, sorry about that. That's um, right. Yeah, West Yorkshire, so kind of slap bang in the middle of the country really. It's um, pretty handy for getting about, you know, for gigs and that. It's sort of slap bang in the middle on the M1, on the M62, off we go. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, now, uh, when I've been when I was looking up stuff about you, I couldn't really find out a lot of information about you apart from the fact that you started playing at a very young age, um, and uh, that you everywhere I've seen it says that you play grunge rock. So, would you class your music as grunge rock or? Um, I think it used to be. I think it's gone more classic rock because um, there was a new new wave of classic rock album that A8 Records put out and we were put on that. Yeah. Um, and I think that was sort of two years ago now before COVID happened and everything. But I think before that, um, especially with the old band members I had, it was sort of yeah, garage grunge, but it's definitely got more into classic rock with the, you know, the heavy solos, which I love to do. And to be honest, yes, I do love grunge, but I also love classic rock. So, and I love blues music. So I think it's sort of pulling on all the strings, you know, so to speak, and just sort of influences from every every avenue. I was going to ask what your influences were because you can't. I mean, you can hear bits of everything in in, in your music. So, what what where do your influences come from? What what, what bands was you know was it that made you start to want to be a musician? I've got quite a varied music taste, to be honest with you, but the bands that, you know, because it ranges from, like, I've studied classical guitar, so I love all that side of stuff. I love Bossa Nova. Um, and then I'll listen to, you know, heavy metal. That's something I listen to from teenage years. Um, and to be honest, the music, yes, we've just talked about it being more classic rock, but with the ones that we yet to record, they're actually leaning towards the more heavier side and that's because of the the new drummer i've got he's quite a heavy you know hard hitter and he right. loves his metal music and i do so i think sometimes when you join the two together you start making different sort of songs but um really i think influence wise comes from nirvana soundgarden garbage skunk and Nancy, all the sort of 90s um yeah. grunge rock i guess yeah so, I mean, how old were you when you first started sort of playing properly, as it were? Um, well, I used to sneak into the pubs at about 15 and put a bit of makeup on and, and uh, do a set on a Friday, Saturday night. But that's really where I learned my craft because it's hard work in the pubs, it really is. Yeah. And then when, when I turned 18, venues said, yep, come on in, you're allowed in now. And we started to play, you know, things like O2, Sheffield, we did Leeds, Islington, um, and just all, all sorts everywhere, you know, from the age of 15, I played a local festival in my hometown, and since that, it's been bonkers. That's it's just been bonkers, which I love it like that. That's how you want it. So, yeah. Have you always played sort of like your own music, or did you start off playing covers and things? or? or... Uh, the first gig I did, that, that festival, actually, that I've just mentioned, I played half covers half of my own stuff and it was acoustic at the time because I didn't have a band um but in the early days to be honest with you yes I did do covers gigs um just to get the ball rolling and gain experience like I say 
But, yeah. you know, probably about two years of that, and I realised, you know, that's not where I want to be. I want to do my own stuff 100%. And it's hard work again, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, well, you know how it is, but um, doing your own music, that's, somebody once told me, they said, if you're going to do anything, make sure you write your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it is, it is difficult. I mean, I think it's changing a bit now, but there was a time when, if you looked at um, most venues anywhere in the country, um, 90% of it were either established bands or it was covers bands and tribute bands. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you were starting out, trying to do your own stuff was very difficult finding anywhere to play. Yeah, well, the thing is actually good good to mention that we're from Wakefield, which doesn't unfortunately have a great music scene because we, did, we have lost a lot of venues pre-COVID, you know, um, we, our biggest venue, Warehouse 23, it's just changed hands, changed its name. Um, but that is all tribute bands. And, and people used to say to us, why are you playing with them? Why are you playing with them? It's like, well, because that's where the crowd is. Yeah. And funnily enough, sometimes they'll be the ones that actually go on to follow you. And, and, you'll, and you'll say, oh, where did you first see? Oh, I saw you supporting, uh, you know, I don't know. So, 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 and, and you think, oh, God, yeah. And you think if you don't do stuff like that and take the opportunities, even though, yeah, we don't really want to support that scene, yeah. but you can definitely pinch the crowd. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I know I, I, I spent a while booking some bands for uh, for a Sunday at a specific venue in, in London, and mm. uh, it was all tribute bands, and we used to, I used to try and slot people I know, bands I know in as support bands all the time to sort of yes. give them a bit of a boost up. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's definitely worth doing because, yeah, yeah, yeah. as you say, that's where the crowds are. You know, I think things are changing a bit now because of the fact that the, the music scene in a lot of places has started. Uh, it seems to have exploded a bit again since uh, since just before COVID, it started sort of rebuilding in a lot of places if we i've had a lot of people on from like uh, up around manchester and that sort of way there seems to be a bit of a scene around that that area again yeah yeah bands. definitely I, I went to manchester last month actually and, and the, there's a definite buzz there it almost does i know people say it's like oh it's like another london but it really is really starting to get that way um yeah i did notice because when we played in london in november um people were you know, just milling about doing the Christmas shopping and then all of a sudden thinking, oh my God, there's a band on and they were trying to get in and it was full. And I yeah. thought, when, before COVID, like, shoppers had just walked by, wouldn't they? They wouldn't be bothered. But now it's like, whoa, something's happening, you know, we can actually yeah, see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, when did you, I mean, when did you start recording stuff and putting it out, putting it out uh, for people to listen to online or to download and stuff? So just after I played that festival in 2014, I was I was 15 then, and the festival said to me, we've got some money left over from um, the festival that we'd like to invest in local artists. Um, we'd like to give you that to record an EP or whatever you want to do with it. Cool. So I put out a four-track EP, which I've still got some copies available. And there's three original tracks, and then there's a cover track on there. Uh, Damien Rice track and it's all acoustic stuff um, but after that people wanted more so I sort of used what I had from that and funded the next one myself right okay I must I mean the the, the very first track I listened to of yours or, or see when I've been doing this and I've been looking looking through stuff from different bands that I've already uh, interviewed your yes. name kept coming up a lot on <laughs> on gigs they were doing and on things okay. they were involved in that you were being one of the support bands or you were on the same venue or whatever at a different night and I, I kept seeing the name come up and I thought I really got to look into this because it's you know <laughs> it just seems to be everywhere at the moment so I just a lot of people have said that to me I'm, I'm like an annoying little thing that's everywhere <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit annoying but uh <laughs> But no, the first track I listened to was uh, Lady Beryllion. 
Yeah, that's an old one. Um, we we have just recently brought that back into the set actually because people are saying, "Can't you play that? Can't you play that again?" It's a it's an interesting song. It really is. I mean, you know, for for a, an early track, it's quite. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I hate to say this because it sounds so patronising, especially coming from somebody like me, uh, who's an older person. That, but your 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 songwriting and your singing and your songs, you sound you sound so much more mature than you are. If you know what I mean, you know, it's kind of yeah. People have said that. Yeah, but I think that was the shock because when I was first starting out and I was, you know, 15 and people say, God, what were I doing at 15? Like playing with my soccer cards or something like that. And I, yeah. and I have two EPs or whatever by that point. And I don't know. I could never hear what other people were hearing. I've not got a massive amount of confidence. To be totally honest with you, I pick on myself a lot because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And... Um, I was like, oh, I could have done that better. Oh. Like, I hate those first two EPs. I absolutely hate them. But, you know, people like them, so whatever. <laughs> but, um, I've, you know, as I've grown into my band and we've worked with new people, I think songwriting has come on leaps and bounds and we've got a new producer that we work with. So, Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you can hear that there's a progression, uh, uh, you know, a development in your music and that sort of thing. But I, I was quite surprised and taken aback at how mature it was considering you know that's nice. yeah, at the time, that thank sort you. Of thing. um so but that was on an ep that was one of your early eps like brilliant wasn't it um yeah that was the second one yeah and then um the other the next track i, I really liked i really like is, is uh backbiting the bullet yeah yeah that's one of my favorites yeah that is a really good song. I really thank do. you. And it's uh, the video is really good as well. It, it works very thank well. You, yeah. Well, my my friend does that, and um, my close friend, uh, well, both of my close friends, um, Katie and and Amy, and and Amy used to be in Fly Girl Films. They're a, they're based in Hull, and they're an all female production company. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Every shiver, every shake Every face and every place Every momentary I close I see your smile I mean, do they do all your videos then, or, or have they done all your videos up to now? Yeah, to be honest, they have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. No, they're, they're really good. I really like the videos. I think they yeah, all of them work very well with the songs. They they they're really they they, they complement each other really well. Good, thank you. I'll let them know. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, and then you you've had an album out uh, recently. Is it recently? Uh, Green Eyes. When did that come out? Very nice, yeah. That was 2017, actually. So I guess it's, right. uh, I guess you could class that as old now as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the last two years, I think that people have mostly either written off or just used it as sort of, uh, that, that was a that was a practice. <laughs> yeah, never mind, start again. <laughs> but that, I mean, that track itself, that the, the track Green Eyes is, is another one that I really liked. And, and liked oh, good, good. For. That, was, that was really good. Um, so, I mean, what made you decide to go from doing EPs and that to doing a full album? 
Um, I was working actually, while I was at college, I wrote that. So I would have been about 16, 17 then. And I was studying tech and I was working, sort of, not, not working, but like helping out in the studio of my friends. And he said, um, you know, I'll, I'll do an album for you if you've got the tracks and we'll, we'll sit together and we'll mix it and we'll master it. Um, and we moved about quite a bit because there was a, um, problems with like, where the studio was we had like three different locations for that album so it took <laughs> the course of about a year um, and I have to say to people it's almost as painful as giving birth or it's what I imagine giving birth to be like so I've not been I've, you know one child is enough I'll just stick to the EPs for that <laughs> so yeah so that was the album so then after that my latest release was the 2019 before COVID. It, it was the Back Back in the Bullet EP. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I do like your stuff. It's, it's got a, although I can hear all the influences that you were saying about, it's got mm -hmm. its own kind of sound and its own feel to it, which is really good. Um, good. And it's, it's nice. Uh, again, without trying to sound patronizing, it's nice to see, somebody younger coming out and doing stuff of that type um yeah. because it's um you do worry sometimes old people like me worry sometimes that the, the sort of music we love is going to die out yeah i worry about that yeah. that, we, that we follow you know and then but to see another sort of generation coming out and doing the same sort of thing and doing it so well as well is is really Thank nice you, it's yeah. really good 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 i'm glad well that there's lots of people I can recommend and, and everybody that was on the New Wave Classic Rock album, and that's just, it shows it there. There is there is new music there. Yeah. The other thing that I've, I've been uh, quite interested to, to kind of cover with this, this with these uh, podcasts is the amount of, uh, the amount of music that I've found coming out that, that's female lead. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, you've got, uh, female lead vocalists or all female bands or or you know yeah. whatever and it it's it's really nice to see that kind of change in the rock world because yeah. uh you know it, it th there have been so there's been so much made of the whole fact that rock music is very misogynistic and it's very kind of like you know it's a it's a male world and all this sort of thing uh but you know it's nice to see kind of it's nice to see that that's breaking down and that, that the women are becoming more active and I mean not that they haven't been before yeah I, you know, it's, a, it's a difficult one isn't it because I think um don't mind when you think back to like Pat Benatar and Jonah Jett there's all they've always been there I yeah. think it's just we're, we're making it more you know, there's more like sort of petitions for let's get more females on festivals and such. And to be honest with you, I've put on a few shows myself that have been all female fronted bands. And people said to me, oh, is that is that intentional? And it's like, to be honest, no, I didn't even think about it. It's just the bands that I like yeah. are female fronted. And, you know, I choose to do gigs with my friends or people that I want to see up here and um, help them out. But yeah, it's, it's changing, I think. It's strange to think it's a man's world. I mean, like a man's game sort of thing. But as somebody said to me when we played 100 Club at London, they said, whoa, how did you get that stretch? Like, you play like a bloke. And I'm like, yeah. what does that mean? Like, do, do, they, do guys have an extra finger? Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> the, thing, the thing, to be honest, it, it amazes me is I still come across people, even now, who yeah. have this attitude that women can't play rock music. And it's just like, how blind are you? Because it's happening everywhere. You know, I mean, yeah. the thing was when I when I was when I was young, when I was a teenager, um, the only the only women around at the time who were doing any kind of rock music at all was like Susie Quattro and then yeah, sort of like yeah, the yeah. Runaways, and you know, mm, yeah. and and then you kind of like, but it, even through the 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 seventies, eighties, and that sort of thing, and even into the nineties, it was still seen as a seen as a kind of novelty almost. It was sort of you know, even though we had you had bands like um, Girls School and Rock Goddess and people like that in the rock charts mm -hmm. all the time, 
yeah. it still seemed to be a novelty to people to see them see women playing rock music but it does yeah. seem to be a lot more of it now and I, i'm really glad about that because i think yeah me too you know, i think it's a it's an important thing to have a, a good mix of of peoples in you know and and there are lots of people who like rock music and it doesn't it's not just a a, a bloke thing and all that sort of thing mm. i do have to ask though do you ever feel uh, that sometimes the men come to see you because you're female <laughs> more than because of your music? Oh, God, that is a very good question. Um, that I would love to ask them, actually. I would love to ask them that. But to be totally honest with you, I mean, we could backtrack this, couldn't we? Let's think... Um, OK, let's think Guns and Roses. Everybody fancied Axl Rose. Everybody yeah. fancied. Well, I fancied Axl Rose. But um, you get the picture. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Kylie Minogue. It doesn't matter who you are, what genre. When you're up there in the spotlight, people take to you, you know. Yeah. You could, yeah. you know, you could be not the best looking person in the world, but because you're up there, you're in the spotlight. Whoa, like you're inspiring, whatever. Um, and I think that's, that's what it is. I mean, the, the thing is, it's a performance and unfortunately sex sells, doesn't it? So yes. if you are quite a good looking woman, man, people are going to fancy you, fine, fair enough, that's going to sell tickets. But I would hope that there's some tiny element that is for the music as well. <laughs> I must admit, it, it's it's um, the, the thing about you, is, uh, look, having seen your videos and, and watched a, a couple of live videos, you're not going out there with a sort of like it's like um the way you dress the way you perform is not sort of like look at me i'm sexy it's look at me yeah. i can play the guitar god you know? i'm glad <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happens to have a set of fishnets on but uh what yeah. who am I that? <laughs> yeah we've all worn them at times uh, hell exactly <laughs> Um, talking about the live videos, and there was one video of yours which was uh, my motivation. Yeah, that's all. Video, yeah. Which I really liked. I really liked that. Oh, that's good. It's it's, uh, it's good to see that that uh, the, the the music works well live as well as sort of like in a sort of studio environment, and that that was really good. I really liked that. Uh, good. So I mean, you've been playing. Have you played like all over the country now or? Pretty much. I think we're only missing Wales and Scotland. Have you played anywhere out of the country? The question. Have you have you um no, but we well before the lockdown happened, we were supposed to play Dublin. Um and I'm really hoping we can get a date there next year because I've never been to Ireland, so I'd love to go for a start off. But, yeah. I'd, you know, I like to, if I say I'm going to do something, it's still in the back of my mind to go, oh, we said we were going to play at Dublin, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, just, I mean, there's, a, there's also a, a growing interest, from what I've seen, there's a growing interest around Europe um, yeah. in, in new British bands. The problem now is the fact that it costs so much to tour mm. now because yeah. of the the Brexit thing and the new licenses and stuff you have to have, it's it's going to be very expensive to do. Um, but would you like to do that at some point? Would you like to go and tour? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I've been offered a place to stay in Portugal because of well, a, a friend of mine that I met through a festival. She's just moved there, and she said there's quite a good scene there. So I'd love to do that. I've also heard that Germany is quite welcoming and. You yeah. know, you get you get quite good reception there. Um, so, yeah, of course, I'd love to play anywhere, you know. Scandinavian countries seem to be very, uh, very big on, on English bands. I don't know quite why that is, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, well, I know that the... I think maybe the mainstream music is more rock than, obviously, we've got, yeah. you know, pop yeah, yeah. stars. Time for another video clip.
So during lockdown, what have you been doing? Have you have you been able to write some stuff or uh, work on uh, material or you know have you been putting stuff out? Um, during lockdown, no. But when we opened up, so we had like three or four months off, didn't we? And then as soon as we could last summer, we did a few outdoor gigs. Um, so for us, it was good because we didn't have 18 months off. We had like three months off, do a bit, three months off, do a bit. Um, so to be honest, it was the rest that we needed because we were going full pelt. But yes, I did write. Um, however, it's quite hard to write when you're not inspired by anything, when every day is the same. So when we got back out on the road, I've, I've written a bit more. So we've got a couple of new songs in the set that we're playing that are not recorded, but we are going back into the studio in January to record a new single. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the big question is, where do you take things from here? Where do you want this to go at the end? Do you want, is it world domination and sort of like your name everywhere and uh, and posters and world tours and merchandising on every, every T-shirt that you can see? Or would you just want to sort of... Uh, Go, go a little bit lighter than that. <laughs> um, well, if you can go all the way, why not? But, you know, it's it's very difficult. I mean, that is the dream, isn't it? To, to, to be able to land in any country and know that you've got an audience waiting for you. That is the dream. Um, I think, for me, I'd like to get to a level where, you know, sort of Joanne Shaw Taylor, she, she plays, you know, a few hundred cap, um, capacity venues and, um, you know, she sells them out, plays all over the country, does a bit in America. Yeah. I think that's a reachable level, potentially, to, yeah. you know, to, yeah, to yeah. jump over the pond, do a few shit and come back here and just get to the point where, you know, we, we can, you know, get on a few more O2 Academy shows. That's really the aim. And then when we get to there, maybe look a bit further on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I, I've found that bands I've talked to seem to have a, they either have a, like a five to five or 10 year plan of where they want to be in five or 10 years time, or yeah. they do it so it's like a year or so at a time. They see, say, you know, over the next year, we want to build things up so that we're doing sort of the next stage up venues from where we are now. Yeah, and yeah. And then see where I we go from there. Yeah, I think it's better to work yearly, yearly because five or ten year, even when you do a five or ten year life plan, nothing ever goes the way you want it, to. and then you're disappointed. Nice. So, you know, why why set yourself those ridiculous goals? Just like I say yearly, to take it as it comes, see how things progress, then move your goal post. Um, what was I going to say now? Oh, festivals as well. We really want to get on some, you know, yeah. sort of bigger festivals. Like I've done. Um, standing calling but i'd really like to you know return there and that was an amazing weekend do, do things like that the bigger festivals yeah 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 i mean there's a lot more um specifically rock based festivals now than there used to be yeah. they, they, they've uh, they started having a lot more of those um which is good i really like you know like to see that uh, growth if you like mm -hmm. um Okay, I just two more songs I want to I want to mention that I really like to, of yours. Uh, Generic girl, I like. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, video for that, and uh, the, the what are you doing it for? That's the newest one, yeah. It's thank the newest you. one. I, I yeah, I really like that. It's really good. Oh, uh, good, because that's a bit of a controversial one, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> why controversial? Um, I don't know. It's, I, I suppose when we released Backbiting the Bullet, that was like a winner with everybody. It was straight down the middle. It's rock. But I think what you're doing it for had that little bluesy element. And, you know, if you don't like blues, you're not going to like it, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not as clear cut. But I, I love playing it. It's, it's a good song to play. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a great song. I mean, I must admit, I... I you know, I, I listen to just about everything at the moment. I've yeah. always, I've always had a, a soft spot for blues music, and sort of, yes. uh, so, yeah. No, I think it's a really good song, and it's, it's. Uh, thank you. Hope it does well. Yes, um, thank you.
hope everything goes really well for you. And uh, I hope to hear new, new, new music from you in the new year. Um, looking you know, forward, I'd like to, you know, it'd be great to see, come and see you live sometime because the live videos look great. I'd love to hear you. Yeah, well, where are you based? Uh, I'm in uh, East London. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we're back down there just before Christmas, actually. Okay. So maybe oh, then? Maybe. We'll see what happens. It depends on money and things. <laughs> Everything's broken uh, nowadays. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure you get in. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, it, it's been really good talking to you. Um, as I say, I hope everything goes really well for you, and I look forward to hearing new music and seeing you around. Uh, everybody out there, um, keep an eye out for Los Campbell. Look at, look at local venues. I'll post uh, links, as I always do, to music and uh uh, videos and um, to the social media sites so that you can see uh, what she's doing and what's going on. Um, so definitely look out for it. It's, 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 the music's really good and it's uh, definitely worth a listen. Um, thank you lots for joining us Thanks and thank you to everybody for tuning in and uh, see you again soon. Bye. Talking Music with Big Andy. Oh.